My dad was diagnosed with dementia. He had this huge decrease in these cognitive abilities. Very, very smart man, electrical engineer in Silicon Valley in its early days in the 70s. And one day he came home from his drive, afternoon drive to the 7-Eleven, which is only about seven blocks away, to get his afternoon cup of coffee. And he told my mom he, he had a hard time finding his way back home. The hippocampus is critical for spatial memory, just like that. And that's when I knew that there was something really wrong with his brain. He was still the same person. His personality was the same, but clearly he, he, he had a hard time remembering the things that we always remember. And I realized then that I wanted to change our, our personal relationship because as a third generation Japanese American, uh, we're, uh, we're always as a culture, you know, very polite, very friendly, but never very affectionate. So I never, you know, I never as an adult said, I love you to my parents, never, because that's too, you know, emotional. So we just never did that. They live in California and I, I live in New York. And um, I realized I couldn't just start saying it, uh, you know, out of nowhere on our weekly Sunday uh, telephone calls. Uh, so I decided that I wanted to um, ask permission, that that would be the appropriate thing to do. I have to, as an adult, I have to ask my parents permission to say, you know, this is ridiculous. I don't really want to do this. But the truth was I was just scared because I, I didn't know what they would say. So my mom answered the phone and, um, you know, we shared about our weeks just like we usually do. And uh, somewhere in the middle of the call, I said, did you ever notice that we never say I love you on these calls? And what do you think about, about saying that? you know, at, at the end of these calls. Silent. There, there was a, a very, very long silence because I'd never asked her or anything like that. And I, I wasn't surprised, but I found myself holding my breath because I didn't know what she was going to say. And after a very, very long pause, she said, I think that's a great idea. It's one thing to agree to say I love you, but it's another thing to actually say it out loud. So I said... I love you. And she said, I love you too. Like we were doing these cartoon kind of voices. And, uh, and I think we both said, oh my God, thank God that's over. Um, but we said it. And then, um, and then she went to go get my dad. I knew my mom was going to be the harder one. So I, I had the same conversation with my dad. He said, yes. We said our awkward I love yous and, you know, hung up the phone. And, uh, and I burst out crying because I had never said I love you to my parents before. And it was, it, was a very, it was a very moving moment for me because I felt like, and I know I did, kind of shift my family culture that day. The next week I called back and then I got on the phone with my dad. So by this, he had dementia, he could not remember. And I was getting ready to say, um, to remind him that we had, we had agreed to do this, so okay, let's, let's do it. Um, but he really surprised me because that Sunday, and literally every Sunday um, after that, he, he remembered to say, I love you first. And as a neuroscientist that studies memory, I, I know why. Emotional resonance is something that, that strengthens a memory even one in somebody whose hippocampus does not work. And that's why we remember the happiest and the saddest moments of our lives. And I think that my father, um, for my father, this was very memorable. His adult daughter, you know, asked him if she could say, I love you. And maybe that, that love or that pride that he had, that this actually happened, really created a new long-term memory in him. And um, so we, my father passed away last year. And so we will always have kind of the before I love you conversations and then the after I love you conversations, which have um, really affected my life for you know, the rest of my life. <laughs>